You're welcome back to the Pulse, and there's just one figure that I've been I've had cause to worry about today. 500. That's the number of Ghanaians who've died between the 1st of January and now to road accidents in this country. This is according to the provisional data on road accidents from the National Road Safety Commission. Now, the 2016 first quarter figures make it the second highest in the last five years, trumped only by the 2014 figure of 520 deaths. Let's take you through the figures now and give you the breakdown. So for the charts that's been provided by the National Road Safety Commission, we know that region by region, there have been a number uh, of individuals who have died. If this could just be uh, highlighted a bit for me so I could go through region by region. Um, this st statistics came through from the Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service about motor accident returns. We know that for the first quarter alone, we've had well over 500 people dying. And those who've had cause to get injuries as a result of accidents are many. We can't even count them. What's worrying here is this. Remember that incident that happened in Kintampo in the Bonafo region? It claimed over 70 lives. Questions were raised about the quality of vehicles on our roads today, even from the motor traffic, the MMT. What's happened to them? That investigation, we're yet to see it. Let's now bring you the breakdown right now. For the cases we've had, they've increased for the first quarter. For uh, vehicles also, there's been an increase. Pedestrian knockdowns is quite minimal comparing to ve vehicular accidents. Those who've been killed are here. There's been a slight increase from 2014 up until now, but it's still a worrisome figure considering that 500 represents the number of students who are currently at the African University of Communications here in Accra. That's just the student population, 500. Imagine a school wiped out like this to road accidents. That would be bad for all of us. And indeed, questions are being raised as to whether the Motor Traffic and Transport Department is doing enough to ensure that the vehicles we have on our roads today pass the test. And also, even for drivers themselves, whether they are taking good care of their vehicles and they are driving well with the right certification so we don't see these gory figures in just five months in 2016 alone. That's worrisome for us as a country. We'll try and uh, get an understanding of what this will mean for the National Road Safety Commission. Yes, we know the figures, they are worrisome, but what are they doing about it beyond churning out the statistics for us today? Also, for the MTTD, what are they doing about it? The private road transport unions who have to coordinate for all commercial drivers, what are they also doing about this issue? These are questions that are begging for answers. These are just uh, a quick wrap of what the figures are right now. Let's now speak to Nanaya Akwada. He's the director at the Bureau of Public Safety. He's also had cause to worry about these statistics. He's joining us now on the line. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Akwada. Uh, good afternoon. Um, right then. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we've just seen the numbers. Over 500 people dying in just four months into 2016. You've also been doing your own research. We know people who've died. We know the injuries. But what has been the biggest cause of the road accidents we've seen on our uh, roads today? Well, as a matter of fact, if you... Um, ask, um, we are the Bureau, we want to attribute it mainly to um, driver errors. Um, of course, there are other um, closely following factors. What we have called for largely in, as re with regards to um, road crashes in this country has been the publication of um, committee reports because we think that largely there are a lot of things that as a people we are missing out on these reports that are usually um, delivered when committees are set up um, as a result of accidents that has caught the nation's attention. So we would continue to press on that point, yes. Driver errors, yes. Um, other aspects as um, road engineering. Okay, but now when you say driver errors, what does that mean? Well, it is several factors. It could be over speeding. It could be lack of knowledge on road signs. It could be lack of knowledge on the um, uh, road engineering, on the nature of roads, and so on and so forth. And those things are the major, major cause, causative factors um, of accidents or road crashes um, in Ghana. Okay. So once we know what the problem is and what the cause is, then the question is, why are we having these challenges? Because if you speak of drivers having uh, issues to do with overtaking and not having the proper certification, should we be holding the next of DVLA and the rest who give out these licenses? And even for the National Road Safety Commission, beyond churning out the numbers, doing a lot more in terms of advocacy. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And that is where we as an organization want to begin from. To, to begin with, we have called um, in the last couple of years, we have called for um, a whole um, overhaul of the licensing regime. We have called for um, different tactics that the law enforcement agencies must use. But most important of all, we have called for the publication of accident or committee reports. We believe that we as a country um, have learned from other countries what they, are, what they have done out of incidents that have taken place. They have published, uh, they have made some recommendations, and those recommendations have been followed through. We as a country, it's time for us to also take up recommendations that committees have made and follow through those recommendations to the latter. We strongly believe that if reports that have been filed, that have been submitted to um, agencies like the Transport Ministry, like the Ministry of Communications, like the National Road Safety Commissions, if all those reports are made available to the public, the public can chew on these reports and support these agencies in the implementations. And you cannot underestimate the value that the individual citizens will bring to bear mm. in ensuring that our roads are safe. Okay. But again, Nanaya, for your Bureau of Public Safety, it's okay to identify the problem, to chastise the institutions thereon who are not doing their jobs. But what are you also doing to contribute to fixing this challenge? Well, I'll, I'll tell you that the Bureau of Public Safety, being um, a non-governmental entity, um, a civil society organization, we have in our own ways engaged with um, the state institutions, like the National Road Safety Commissions, in trainings and other stuff. But there is a limit that as an entity we can go. And we have been calling on state agencies in the last seven years to make available these reports that the state have funded committees to come up with so that we can also get involved in solving the challenge that is facing the country. We heard the president say a couple of months ago um, when we, the issue of the Guantanamo uh, detainees came up. He told us without mentioning words that the greatest threat to our nation is the road accidents, the road crashes that we must focus attention on. And that was no lie. That is very true. And today, the figures are confirming it. Mm. It's about time that as we engage, as we call for, the media will sustain the campaign to get state entities to publish public mishaps, reports that... Uh, that bother on public mishaps. Is that it not is also because, Nanayao, Nanayao, is it not also because for the state institutions, DVLA, the Motor Traffic and Transport Department, uh, the National Road Safety Commission, we've been focusing too much on advocacy of over course, we, action we, and we enforcement. Also left, we also left out the police. We also left out the police. No, it is not the case that we focus on advocacy. There is material that we can focus on to even change our, um, our, our, our trainings of drivers. There is material available that the, DV, um, the DVLA can focus on to re, um, revive or revise um, the training material for people um, towards licensing them. Mm. But all of these material are sitting on shelves in some cases in minister's office, in some cases in chief director's office. Those reports must be made public. We feed on. The DVLA is also going to go through these reports, revise their training program, revise their licensing regimes, and so on and so forth. Those reports, the MTTD are also going to feed on to revise how they go about even enforcing the laws governing um, the usage of our roads. Okay. And those, unfortunately are sitting somewhere. So what we are left with is advocacy and advocacy, advocating in the blind. All right. Uh, Nanea Akwada, thank you for your time. Executive Director of the Bureau of Public Safety, sharing his thoughts with us on what he makes of the statistics we see in very high level of deaths in just four months.
in 2016, over 500. That's a huge figure. Let's just hope that beyond the announcement and beyond the churning out of the figures, we will see a concerted effort to see less carnage on our roads in this country in the year 2016. On that note, we'll go first.